Hey there, Steve Shermer here at Silk Road Catalyst. And for several weeks, I've had this sense that God wants me to share with you about the plight of the Uyghurs in China and why as followers of Jesus, we need to care and get involved. But before I do, I encourage you, hit that subscribe button and push that notification bell so that when we drop new content, you'll know. Now let's get started. Everything I share with you today, you can find doing a simple Google search. Uh, this is information many other people have compiled together and it's easy to find. And so you may be asking who are the Uyghurs? So let me share who they are first and then I'm gonna get into what their plight is all about. Now, as I describe who the Uyghurs are, I'm gonna share it from a missionary perspective. So the Uyghurs are descendants of the Turks and their Uyghur language is this mixture of the Kyrgyz, Kazakh, and Uzbek languages. Now 99% or 99.9% .9 actually of Uyghurs are Muslim. So that actually makes them an unreached people group. But 0.01% are Christians. So there are a few Christians among them. Now out of 12 and a half million people worldwide, 96% live in China. And out of those who live in China, the vast majority live in the far northwest part of China in the province of Xinjiang. Since 2017, it's been widely reported that between 1 and 3 million Uyghurs, including some Uzbeks and Kazakhs, have been detained by force and pushed into internment camps or re-education camps, as some may call it. And out of those who have been detained, some have mysteriously disappeared where their families have no idea where they are. They don't even know if they're alive or dead. And some who have made it through the camps have been forced to relocate to other parts of China, working in factories that they didn't want to work in, completely separated from their families for new, who knows how long. Additionally, it's been reported that some Uyghur women are being forced to marry Han Chinese men, and new identities are being forced upon orphan Uyghurs. Now, don't get me wrong, not all Han Chinese know what's going on. In fact, I would argue that the vast majority of have no clue this is even happening in their country. So let's be careful not to place blame on the wrong group of people. What I've just shared with you is like a 36,000 view of what's happening to Uyghurs in China in 2020. And to call this barbaric is an understatement. I mentioned earlier that as Christians, we need to take notice and care. So the answer is why? I mean, we're Christians and they're Muslims, so why should we care about what happens to them? Well, it's simple. Imago Dei. It's a term that means image bearer of God. So as Christians, we have no problems looking at ourselves as believers and, and claim that we are image bearers of God. But the truth is, every Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, Mormon, Baha'i, or whoever they are, Every person, past, present, and future, who has ever walked this earth or will walk this earth is an image bearer of God. And so the fact is these Uyghur Muslims are image bearers. And for that one reason, we need to care. And I believe we need to speak out as followers of Jesus. You may be asking yourself, Steve, what can I do? I live 3,000, 8,000, 10,000 mi 10, miles away. I mean, what can I do from afar? I can't go to China and be Rambo. And no, I'm not asking you to do that. But you can do some of these three things I'm going to share with you. But the first one I know you can do, and that is to pray. We can pray for those in the internment camps and pray that God would give them relief from this oppression. And as we do that, don't forget to pray for the oppressors because we need to be praying for them as well. Number two, we need to be praying for the families who are affected by that, both the families in China and their extended family outside of China. We need to be praying that God would comfort them. And number three, we need to be praying that the gospel would advance to them, those inside the camps and those outside the camps. Now you may be asking, well, how is the gospel gonna get inside the camps? I mean, this is controlled by communist China. Well, that's simple. God can do miracles. 
And when I talk about miracles, it's reported by uh, missionaries worldwide who work with Muslims that it's approximately 80% of all Muslims come to know Christ in part through a dream of Jesus. So let's pray that God would give the Muslims dreams. But let's also pray that God would send people into the camps to proclaim the gospel because that's important as well. And that is possible. It, seem, it may seem impossible to us, but it's not impossible uh, to God. And I know a guy who did that in North Korea, and he spent two years in prison sharing with all the officials. It's not some guy I've just read about on the internet. I've met him, I've sat with him, I've had a meal with him. So I know that if God can do that in North Korea, he can do a miracle in China and get the gospel inside of those camps so the Uyghurs in them can hear the gospel. The second thing you can do is reach out to a Uyghur family or community in your area. Now, I'm really talking about those who live outside of China. So even though that's a small percentage of the global Uyghur population, I want to encourage you that if you live near one, reach out to them, serve them, show them that you care, pray for them in person. And as you do that, maybe doors will open for you to share the gospel, but they need to know you care and they need to know that Christians care. So do that if you live near them and, and just pray that God would open up the door so that you could do just that. Finally, you can advocate. You can advocate on behalf of the Uyghurs where you're at. You can use social media. You can go to your church and advocate to them on their behalf. And if you live in a place where this is allowed, you can go to your government officials and let them know that you care about this situation and you want them involved. And even if they are involved, the more they know that their constituents want them involved, the more they might do in holding China accountable for this atrocity. I share this not just to talk about the Uyghur situation, but to highlight the oppressed globally. There are women in Delhi who are in a prison-like situation, uh, slaves in the sex industry. And there are like teenage girls in Nepal in the same scenario. You've got the Rohingya situation in Southeast Asia, and you've got many other examples all over the world of oppressed peoples who need people like us to advocate and fight on their behalf. Now I get it. There are Christians in this world who are also oppressed. And, and as Christians, I think we're, we're more easily inclined to, to stand up and speak out on their behalf because we're family. I mean, literally, we're an eternal family that will get to spend eternity with one another. But uh, persecution and oppression is not exclusively reserved for Christians. And because of that, we also need to stand up and speak out and advocate on behalf of the oppressed who are Muslim, who are Buddhist, Hindu, atheist, or, or whatever they are. If they are oppressed, we as the church need to stand up and say something about it and, and fight for them on their behalf. And as we do this work that's helping them be set free from whatever oppression they're facing on this earth, we need to remember something that is so vital and so important that it just be that it is second nature for us. As we're doing the work of setting captives free from an earthly perspective, which is good and right, we also need to be working to proclaim the gospel to them. Let's not get trapped in a scenario where we're only concerned about what happens to them on this earth. Let's also be concerned about their eternity. Let's be concerned because they need the gospel. They need Jesus to set them free. And the only way they can do that is first, they've got to hear the gospel from us and be reunited with God through Christ, who is the only way to God the Father. So as I close, if you want to get involved or learn more, or want to find a way to work and partner with us at Silk Road Catalyst to help an oppressed people group who are specifically gospel deprived and within the Silk Road region, please reach out to us because I would love to talk with you about that so that we can come together and work together to get the gospel to the gospel deprived.